A closing business finds there is a linear relationship between the number of shirts and it can sell and the price P it can charge per shirt. In particular, historical data shows that 1,000 shirts can be sold at a price of $30 per shirt, while 3,000 shirts can be sold at a price of $22 per shirt. Find a linear equation in the form of blah. Okay. So, um, so basically, what we have here is they're telling us that there's a linear relationship between the number of shirts and, and the price it can charge per shirt. Now, if you know there's a linear relationship, that means it's a straight line, right? So why don't we just sketch a very, very quick graph? Why don't we gain a little intuition? Now, basically, you know price is in, uh, I should say price is dependent basically on the number of shirts more or less. But then, you know, you might say, well, isn't the number of shirts kind of depend on price? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little uh, reflexive, those relationships, so to speak. Uh, so I'm going to, though, assume that N, that the number of shirts would be the independent variable. And then the price per shirt would be the dependent, uh, the dependent variable, okay? Uh, so now, knowing that 1,000 shirts can be sold for a price of $30 per shirt, that actually represents a, a point right on the graph. Remember that anytime you have two values here, shirts and a price per shirt, and they're telling you it's a linear, fu or a linear function or a linear relationship, uh, these two values are related to each other, and they can be represented as coordinates, all right, on a on the line. So let's pretend that we we let's pretend that this point is a thousand. Okay, and this is obviously not to scale, but and this point would represent thirty. Okay, that means I would have a point literally right about here. Okay, let me put this in red. I'd have a point right there, roughly. Yeah, that doesn't look totally accurate. That looks maybe a little better. And now we have another point. It says three thousand shirts can be sold for a price of twenty-two dollars per shirt. So now if I go out to 3,000, let's just say 3,000 is somewhere over here now, right? 3,000. I'm going to move my N out a little bit. And now the price has now dropped down to, let's say, 22. So let's say that line represents 22. And now the line is here. You might say, how, the, how does that make sense? Well, remember, it's a cost per shirt, right? You've seen examples of this in everyday economics, right? The more you buy of something, usually the price per that item will go down. Your total cost will be greater, Right, because what what's you know thirty times one thousand, right, is going to be uh, thirty thousand, right, and then you have twenty two dollars for each shirt, but now you're buying, uh, you know, three thousand shirts. So what does that work out to be? Well, it works out to be about sixty six thousand, right. So it's more overall, but your price per item is declining. So that should make sense here, just from a pure economic standpoint. So this is the this is the line. Our job is to literally find an equation for the line. So if you know, and if you can make the connection, which is the most important connection, if you can make the connection that these two values here, or I should say the 1,000, the 1,000 and the 30, and the 3,000 and the 22 represent two points, that's the key to the problem, okay? So why don't we, assume, so like I was saying, N is kind of like X. The P here, price per shirt, is kind of like uh, Y, all right? So... What I'm going to do, and you know we write our ordered pairs as x comma y, right? So why don't we do this? Let's write the coordinates for the point of a thousand shirts costing thirty dollars per shirt. So let's write now. So n was like the x value, right? So that comes first, comma then thirty. I know there's a lot of commas there, so it looks a little confusing. Let me bring that out. And then this one, let's write now that three thousand, comma twenty two. So if you know two points, how do you find the slope? Well, you know, we use the slope formula, right? So the slope m is going to be equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. In this case, you know, we called p our y, right? So this is really, uh, it doesn't even matter, honestly. I'm just going to, you, you know, let's call this x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. Okay, plug it in. So the slope here is going to be y2, which is 22, minus y1, which is 30, divided then by x2, which is 3,000, minus x1, which was 1,000. Let's simplify this a little bit, right? So the numerator comes out to negative 8. This would be over 2,000. And now let's just plug it on into the calculator. Let's get a decimal answer here. So 8 over 2,000, and it's 0 0.004, okay? 0.004, and that's negative. That's the slope, and the slope is negative as we saw from the graph. So now, 
Now that you know the slope, what's the next step to find the linear line, right? If you guys have been doing enough practice, this should be repetitive at this point, which is good, right? So y is equal to, by the way, once you get to that point where you're like, oh my God, this again? Oh, God, I know how to do it. That's when you know you're going to do really well on the test, and that's when you know you really understand the material. So y is equal to mx plus b, right? This is the form formula for the linear uh, equation. And what we need is we need the y-intercept, right? We need to find the y-intercept here. So how do I find the y-intercept? Well, I got to know these three things. So we know the slope. And remember, y and x just represent then any point on that line. So you can choose either one of these two. It doesn't matter which one. I'll choose the one that's a little, uh, what's the word? Less, 1,030, okay? So the y value there is 30. I'm choosing this one right here, by the way, guys. The m, the slope is negative 0.004. The x value there was 1,000, and I'm solving for b. So let's do this, right? So this is going to be 30, okay? Will then be equal to, and this is now negative, right? So this should work out to be negative 4 or so, right? And you can always double check yourself in the calculator if you so need. Good. And then add that to b. And we got to solve for b, so we got to add 4 to the other side, okay? And now this is 34 is equal to b, all right? Okay, and now, what do we have? We have the y-intercept, we have the slope, and now we can simply get the linear equation. Remember, linear equation is defined by the slope and the y-intercept. So let's plug it in. So y, well, in this case, it's not really y, though, right? We said y is basically p, okay? So p, and you can say of n, don't worry about it, just you can write p. Um, will be equal to then the slope value of negative 0 0.004 times the x value, but we said x is like n, so that's times n, plus then the b value of 34. Okay? So there's the equation, right? And part of it might, you might say, well, wait a minute, if the y-intercept is 34, that would be the cost when they sell no shirts. So who's paying $34 for the shirt if there's no shirts being sold? I guess that's what it starts out at. I don't, I'm not sure. Good question. <laughs> All right, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. And we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.